Hey everyone, it's Stacy from My Petite Garden, and welcome back, or welcome if you are new to the channel. Today we'll be discussing the growing medium that is called Fluval Stratum. Fluval Stratum is a mineral rich volcanic soil substrate from Mount Azo, which is the largest active volcano in Japan. The brand that I use is called Fluval Stratum. I know there are other similar volcanic soil substrates, but I can't speak to whether they are exactly the same or not since this is the only brand that I have used so far. They do advertise that the substrate is excellent in promoting root growth, so a lot of people love using this as a rooting substrate to get their cuttings started. Some people also like to use this as a more permanent planting medium for their houseplants, similar to the likes of Lekka and Pond. This substrate is said to be able to last between 2-3 to three years when used in aquariums, so I'm just going to assume that it will last around the same amount of time, if not maybe a little longer, when used as a substrate for plants. But obviously that will be dependent on how you use it and your growing conditions. I purchased mine from Amazon, so I will have it linked in my Amazon store for you if you are interested. But I believe they also carry this in pet shops like Petco, PetSmart, and also aquarium stores as well. So if any of you do decide to give this a go, I would highly recommend reading the info provided on the bag. It's very informational and helpful in getting you started and getting a better understanding of the substrate and what it does. And just as a reminder, I am completely new to using the substrate. So everything I am mentioning or showing is just solely based on my own experience and research. And as with anything, testing it out for yourself is probably the best way to find out if something will work for you as well. So that being said, let's get started with the experiment part of this. I took some cuttings of my Hoya sigillatus and Hoya parviflora splash to root separately in water and fluval stratum for this experiment. However, I was only able to include footage of my Hoya sigillatuses before when I was taking the cuttings because I think I might have lost the footage for the parviflora splash. So apologies for that and it's very unfortunate, but you'll see the update. So for this experiment, I only compared the fluvo with water because that is the only other method of propagation that I currently use and I've always had great success rooting in water especially with Hoyas so I wanted to see how that compares with the fluvo.
I had initially planned to use this little glass jar for the water props but then decided to switch it out because the cuttings were just not sitting in it correctly for the stems to touch the water. So the way that I currently like to pot up with the fluvo is using um, two separate containers. Basically the first plastic one will have the drainage on the bottom of it and then I'll use another one of the exact same container and that one will be the kind of catch tray for the water when it drains. So I ended up putting three cuttings in water and two cuttings in fluvo. After I initially pot it up, I usually water it a few times just to rinse out any dust and to make sure the fluvo gets as equally moist as possible. I don't usually save any sort of water reservoir, um, I just let the fluvo get moist. When I'm watering it regularly, I usually just um, let enough water soak through where I can see maybe where a little bit of water starts to gather in the catch cup. I will also be potting my Hoya Tequila Sunrise into Fluvo. This arrived to me with significant root rot, so I placed it in water in hopes to try and save it. But unfortunately, it didn't do well in water. And what you see here is pretty much what's left of the root system, and you can see the roots are very unhealthy looking and very stringy, which means that it's rotting. Now I'm gonna put in Fluvo and see what happens. I honestly thought that this was a goner because the leaves just looked really sad and starting to get really flimsy. So I'm hoping for the best here and really it's just a last ditch effort to save it. So here I'm just chopping off the remaining roots that are rotted because it's better to not have any roots at all than to have rotting roots just sitting around.
Okay, now it's time for some updates. It's been about a month, give or take, since the last footage um, where I potted up some of the Hoyas in Fluval. So now I'm going to show you guys how they've progressed. Here is the Hoya Sigillatus that I had potted into Fluvo. It's the two cuttings and you'll see here that it is rooted and new growth has emerged from both cuttings. Another thing I really like about using Fluvo is that the roots are very apparent in the substrate because the Fluvo is black and the roots are usually, well healthy roots are usually white so it's very easy to catch them um, when they are there. And here it is with the water propagation and like the um, Fluvo in water it is probably the best way to see roots that are growing. So um, that's why I really like growing or propagating in water. And you can see here the water propagation is doing just as well, if not better in my opinion. Um, all the cuttings have new growth as you can see. And I find that the growth is definitely a little more robust in the water. Next is the Hoya Pariflora splash cuttings that I couldn't show you guys the before footage because I lost it. But here you can see the one that's potted in Fluvo, the roots are just gorgeous. It is really healthy looking and you can see them pretty clearly through the cup. And if I show you guys closer, you can actually see right there on the right side, there are little growth points that are coming up and that will be where the new growth is coming. So it is very promising. And here are the water propagation cuttings. Again, everything rooted beautifully. You can see the amount of roots there are. And um, this one actually has new growth. It actually already put out two leaves there and then it's putting out another set of leaves. And again, I think I might have put three cuttings in the water versus the two in the fluval. And I think the reason why I did this is just because I could fit more in here. I'm not sure <laughs> why else it would be. But yeah, so again, I think the water propagation did a little bit better in terms of the speed of the growth. But it could be just because of the different cuttings. Next, I have some additional Fluvo Hoya updates to share with you. Some of these I put into Fluvo for various different reasons. Some due to root rot and others who just wouldn't root. So I put them into Fluvo and let's take a look at them. So the first one here is my Hoya Species 2007-13. I got this as a rooted two-leaf cutting and I had it growing in my potting mix for a while and it did absolutely nothing at all. So I finally decided to move it into Fluval to see if some new growth would be encouraged. And I honestly couldn't believe it that in under two weeks it started sprouting the new growth point that you see here. Thank you. 
This here is my Hoya Li Ai China. I got this one as an unrooted two leaf cutting. This one is extremely hard to find, so I was super careful about making sure this roots for me. I originally started rooting this in water, and the roots were growing very nicely. And once it was established enough, I decided to move this into Fluvo as a more quote unquote permanent growing medium. And it's been doing amazing in Fluvo. It started putting out new growth almost immediately. This whole new vine that you see here is actually um, something that just started when I put it into Fluvo. So you can see there are leaves forming as well. So it's very exciting. This Hoya Brahmanica was a plant that I ordered as a fully rooted plant with about 5 to 6 leaves. However, when it arrived, I noticed that the root system was pretty much non-existent and to be honest, I was pretty peeved about it. But I was on a mission to try and get this guy to root. So I had originally placed it in water and this actually did not do well in water. In fact, what little roots it had started rotting away and the leaves just started falling off one by one. So as a last ditch effort, I decided to put it in Fluvo and as you can see, the root system is looking beautiful and it has since put out two new leaves. And here is the Hoya Tequila Sunrise update that you saw me pot up in Fluvo before. I see the roots are starting to develop and there's even a new growth point popping up. So that's really exciting and I'm so happy. So fingers crossed for this one. Lastly is my Hoya Crassi Petiolata Splash. Nothing was really wrong with this one aside from it not doing anything after it put out the third leaf. And this one was growing in my potting mix. So I just placed it in Fluvo to see what would happen. And again, it did end up encouraging some new growth and you can see right there. So wrapping up my experience so far with Fluvo, I would definitely say that it is a great option to have on hand when and if you have cuttings that you have trouble getting to root. I do truly believe that this substrate is great and encouraging root growth and also just growth in general, I find. I also enjoy using this because it's just a very simple and clean substrate to use, unlike regular potting mix, and it doesn't require any mixing of different components, so that makes it very easy. And obviously, in terms of long-term use of this as a growing medium, I can't really speak to it since 
The longest that I have had any plant growing in Fluvo is about a month or two. So I will continue letting my plants grow in this and see what happens. I'm still figuring out whether additional fertilizer will be necessary at some point down the line. And I've only really used Fluvo for my Hoyas as you can see, so I can't really speak to how well other types of plants will do in it, but from what I've researched so far, it seems to do pretty well for aeroids as well. I will probably start rooting other types of plants in Fluvo just to see what will happen and I will continue to give everyone updates along the way if you guys are still interested. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it somewhat useful and at least enjoyed watching it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!